Los Nachos, amigos, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Record Breakers. I'm Petey Rave. Got my finger on the camera. Uh, your man with no plan. Here with me, as always, is my team, my squad, my crew. We've got Brett. Get on the boat. The banana boat. <laughs> We've got Drew. There's a banana boat? Mm-hmm. And we've I got... Don't know how big it is. You put a <laughs> banana on the boat. That's yes. how big the boat is. See, no. The banana boat has to be pretty big because the banana, the only banana boat I know fits Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Chris Paul, and their wives. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. uh, and we also got Patrick. Well, that got weird. Yes. <laughs> it's oh. a show about plantains. Oh. Everybody got, loves plantains. It got weird. We're about to talk about an album... With a song titled Anonymous Esophagus. So let's get going. Yes. Uh, let's get It's only going. getting weirder from here. Yes, it's only getting weirder from here. Uh, let's get going. Uh, we're, of course, talking about music, as we always do every week. Talk about albums we share with each other. Uh, go around the horn. Give you know, give our thoughts and things and whatnot. Oh, wow. uh, around the horn. Exactly. Uh, uh, is this week, are we doing the Cox? <laughs> oh, wait. Yes. <laughs> this is, that's what's well, uh, two recordings in a row. <laughs> if we wanna, that, that I, uh, in which I actually We had plenty had. of time to see that before now. <laughs> Production. No, no, they, I, I understand that it happened during the Cheap Trick episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, wait, I don't know if you noticed wait. it. The, during a good chunk noticed. of the, in the cheek prick episode, I mean, I noticed it like like a little bit before through the in the end uh, through the beginning, and I changed it <laughs> in the middle of the show, but <laughs> it happened. I can't believe none of us noticed. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so you know, it's a magic. magic. Oh god. Uh, but yeah, speaking of uh, what we're talking about this week, uh, it's going to be provided by none other than Patrick. Patrick, what do you got for us this week? Uh, we're going to, so a a little bit of a time ago, we talked about, uh, Devin Townsend and, uh, Ziltoid the Omniscient, uh, prior to making that he was in a band called Strapping Young Lad and, uh, he went solo and not, you know, they parted in good ways. It was just ready, you know, do something different. So, uh, basically, basically the rhythm section of that, the guitar player, bass player and drummer from Strapping Young Lad, uh, found a vocalist and started Zimmer's Hole, who are a metal band. From uh, Vancouver, CA. Canadians. Vancouver, weird. California. Yes. <laughs> Canadians are weird. Uh, also, uh, uh, re- uh, it's an interesting thing of note Byron Stroud, the basis for this and Stramping on Land, also was uh, the basis for uh, Fear Factor during their We Hate Dino phase. Uh, before uh, I, I had to sit through a Fear Factory set once at a festival show. It was uh, not the best set I've ever watched a band play. Yeah, it was. You it was. Uh, it was up until it was up until Burton uh, pulled his heel turn. Uh, but yeah, interesting little factoid. Uh, let's talk about expectations. Uh, Brett, what were your expectations coming into this album? I, I really did not know what I was stepping in. Um, like you know, it, it, the name does not really make me think or oh somebody I've, I've there's not a whole lot of times that i've been in the presence of somebody talking about zimmer's hole um and then uh i listened to it and i still didn't know exactly what it was but uh um yeah it, this is uh yeah the, the, the this is a thing uh that we get another one of these <laughs> uh drew what were your expectations coming into this album uh my expectations coming into the album well, oh hey we're doing this album today hey Um, i remember that (laughs) um behind the curtain didn't realize until the morning of the day of recording that we were doing this album um but i was told it was zimmer's hole i remember in passing um when we were listening to uh the omniscience uh hearing something about a zimmer's hole uh type of band so i thought maybe it would be in the vein of uh possibly heavy metal and that was a all, all I was expecting at that point, and then I listened to it. And we'll talk about that now. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I 
I could probably guess what we were into, but it was it was hard to it's hard to guess because I'm not as familiar with Zimmer's hole at all. Uh, but I know a couple of names that are connected to it, so it's definitely interesting to kind of see what was coming to us. Uh, Patrick, what? How would you describe this mu- album music? What will be the themes and elements that come up on this record? So uh, it's very much in the vein of sort of the modern era. By that, I mean post-2000 melodic death metal, but with a healthy dose of uh, of sort of uh, like Dio-esque vocals blended in with the screaming. Uh, it's, it's very over the top. It's very ridiculous. I don't know if we mentioned this. The album's called When You Were Shouting at the Devil, We Were in the League with Satan, which is basically to say, when you were listening to Motley Crue, who suck, we were listening to Venom, who don't suck, except they kind of do. But Venom is one of the earliest death metal bands, and they're who pretty suck, amusing. Who suck with credibility. Yes, they have credibility. They have metal cred. They they weren't all bad, but they were – they they uh they built a lot of the uh, of the the death metal ideology that got followed very much. They literally uh, created black metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have an album called Black Metal where that came from, but black metal is another story. But death metal, for the most part, has never been intended to be taken all that seriously. It's it, lyrically, at least, it's usually uh, singing about evil stuff to scare parents more than anything. It's not, you know, super devil worshipy church burning that black metal got into a little bit in the 90s it was always sort of uh what will what will scare kids moms and uh that was this is taking that like okay uh let's be funny about it a little bit it's not quite a full-on comedy record i feel like it's taken significantly more seriously than a loosely related band because they have the same drummer the uh the machine that is gene hoagland one of the best death metal drummers in the in the world right now, uh, Death Clock, who everyone knows from you know Cartoon Network. Uh, also, Nathan Explosion makes an appearance here. It, it's if you like awesome. Death Clock, but you want more, you want better musicianship, you kind of land on Zimmer's Hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brett, what would be the themes and elements that caught your attention? Speaking of landing on Zimmer's Hole, um, yeah, no, the- in Zimmer's Hole, if we want to just. Keep rolling with with that. No, no, no. I just you know, I'm second all the way. But no, um, th- this we got ourselves a novelty metal act. Yay, we we've, we've had like five of these now, maybe on the show. Um, themes and elements. Um, well, everything that comes out of anyone's mouth is like a gurgling, flimmy mess of no thank you. Uh, like they had cream of uh, something soup. Before they recorded, um, lyrics pretty juvenile. I mean, you know, as as a connoisseur of novelty heavy metal bands of other varieties, whatever. Um, but these aren't like all that super creative. I mean, you, there, there there's some stuff here we'll get into. I'm sure. Um, sometimes you get like this grosser sounding Smeagol voice, and sometimes <laughs> you get like uh, like. Uh, like Chinese knockoff Halford. Um, the, 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 there's also this gurgling breathing thing that goes on. Uh, th- th- that, that, was, that was something. But no, uh, like, other than that, whatever. Um, the, there's the, the, the palm mute, the double bass pedal, the squealy harmonics. They, they're, they're all present and, and accounted for. Um, it is definitely of a style and of a, of a time and place um, musically. It's a time and place and a music style that I tend to not be into, but uh, I gave it a whirl. Um, but there's also like a couple of pretty weird, halfway decent, uh, like spoof songs, and we'll get into those. Uh, that uh, that where they, you know, they 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 tried to do one thing and they 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 accomplished it uh, in a way that made me smirk. Um, but yeah. Uh, you're going to get a lot of weird mouth noises in this album. If you if you if you're coming here like blind, you know, it's there's like some uncomfortable like knowledge of what's going on in the throats of people. <laughs> and in not in the way that you would think of this style of music. Yeah. Uh Drew, what would be the themes and elements, themes and elements that caught your attention on this record? Um it I was right. It was metal. Um the the cameo hit me really really good. The drums 
uh, were very and pretty fantastic. I think um, the you either usually go with way too much of the blast beat stuff, or you actually know how to mix it in with some really solid fills and make an actual good like metal drum uh, section, which this had. I loved the sort of as Brett uh, put it, the Chinese knockoff Howard thing, the, the swelling uh, vocals from Vilago, Vilago, however you pronounce that man's name. Vilago. Um, that, uh, I'm white and don't care. Um, uh, were really good, uh, really, really kind of fantastic to me. Um, the growls, the guttural growls, the low growls were really, really great. Um, the sort of mix of that like power metal um on the hilltop ready for battle thing was great the jokes in it uh hit me in the right way kind of funny especially when you're name dropping uh people who murdered people um not that i have a grudge um or anything like that but it's it was good um the part that for me was something that almost entirely ruined any fun I would have had in the record was the squeal bit in the vocals that like almost the KVLT sort of thing going on. That was just not fun. Um, it's, uh, I hate that. That is the exact type of vocal thing that I hate in a lot of uh, modern metal. When I hear it, I usually automatically turn it off. Luckily, it was used more for, like, flavor than it was as a consistent thing throughout an entire, like, verse or chorus. So it was okay. But uh, the Satan's balls in a vice sort of style, I'm not super down with. Um, otherwise, though, everything in here was pretty uh, solid all around is what I could say about it. So. Yeah, there's a lot of fun. There's, there's, there was a lot of stuff to, to have fun with in a uh throughout the journey of this record uh even with the, the the immaturity there's a lot of things to kind of dig on in the journey of this record uh let's talk about some key tracks patrick what would be some of the key tracks to zero in on so i'll start with the record breakers thing talk about the title track when you were shouting at the devil we were in the league with satan uh it's it's Tug and cheap, super speed death metal. Like also, it's, also, there's no the. It's just we're we're in leagues with Satan. Yeah, uh, it, it it pretty much just gives you an idea what's going on, and you get Gene Hoagland being a goddamn beast. Uh, I was trying to think who is a better death metal drummer than Gene Hoagland right now, and there's maybe one or two guys I'd put in that in that class. Uh, Animal. He is, yeah, Animal uh, Martin Lopez, who used to be an Opeth. R- Ringo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a he is uh, he's got the cleanest speed of anyone right now. Like anyone who's ever listened to uh, Death's album Symbolic that he played on, like he's incredible on that one. Uh, here he's having a lot more fun. This is a lot more laid back. Uh, Devil's Mouth. This sort of kicks off where the album really gets going for me. I really like the back half of this. Uh, it, it just uh, it's a really really fun song and it's stupid. But it's like the right kind of stupid, and and it's got it's got a good chorus that you will sing along with when you're alone in your car, uh, if you're me. And then the song that started it all for me, Anonymous Esophagus. So uh, uh, let's let's roll our minds back to six or seven years ago. It's probably something came out I think in 2008 or so. Uh, it's probably 2008, early 2009. I'm driving my parents' Honda Element, which had a serious satellite radio in it at the time. Um, and they had a station called Liquid Metal that played what at that time was the sort of new wave of American heavy metal and all the related stuff that was going on. And this song came on, and it's very, very rare for me to to listen to the radio at all, let alone be like, oh my god, what is this? This is the most fun shit I've heard in ages. And it was immediately like, go out and find this record because that song is the dumbest, most ridiculous thing. If even if you change the lyrics to be something semi-serious, it would still be awesome. But it it is the whole song could be summed up in the line, "My dick should sing this song," which is in there. It is it's stupid and juvenile 
and everything that is what I love about death metal is that it is that the best of it is usually a little bit ridiculous uh, and doesn't take itself the least bit seriously. And it has, you know, it, I love the vocals. It's got a great guitar melody and it's such a dumb song, but it's something I can't, I can't help but love. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brett, what will be some of the key tracks for you? Well, there's B- Devil's Mouth, uh, the 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 song, the the lifestyle, the the guitar work on on that song, while while cliche was really fun. It, it, it like a like in a way that uh, like if you could piece and glue every guitar lick that you have to avoid because it's been beaten to the dirt, but you do it in a way where you you know you mix it into a big like bingo spinner wheel thing and. You pull them out. I, I can see how that that would be fun to do, um, because you know you're you're making you're making music for funds, not for you know changing the world. This isn't like a farm aid concert. Um, uh, there, there's you know on on the other hand, there's there's the song Fisticorp, <laughs> uh, uh, which uh, is is probably the laziest song we've heard on an album. Uh, the, you know, this is, this is right up there with the uh, mermaider, um, <laughs> repeating for ever. Um, but, uh, really the, this album, you know, began and ended with, uh, the hair doesn't grow on steel. Um, because it is a, it is just a knockoff of an Iron Maiden song. Um, you know, they, they know what makes a, a metal ballad. Um, from the way that they enunciate to like the way the track ends, and then there's a quiet little horse neighing in the background. You know, there's just like the fucking yeah. The horse is what got me. The horse gets the sproing of the day award, um, even though a horse neighing, like in in fear, is not really a musical instrument. Um, it, it could be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, Life I mean, is the, an instrument. The yes, you know, the, the, they're. This was, it was difficult for me to pull some things out. I've tried to lay my prejudices out ahead of time, um, but uh, you know when somebody does a, a functional knockoff of an Iron Maiden song, I I, I will pay attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Um, when you were shouting at the devil, let's go about that. Um, the jab. Anytime you can jab at Motley Crue. Uh, and we will get back to the other jab at Motley Crue in just a minute. Um, I, I'm i going to sit up and take notice. Um, again, while parts of the singing are not my style, um, the, the glam side of the hair metal stuff, it's worse. Um, the trucking guitars, it's a good headbang bit of uh, fun for that one anonymous esophagus like i was listening to the first time i listened through it i was like oh okay this is pretty good but like i wasn't like paying attention so then like the second time when i sat down to write my notes and i was like really thinking about each song which one i wanted to notice i actually listened to the lyrics fucking really all right so that happened um but then again i said i was going to get back to the motley crew thing Hair doesn't grow on steel. It's a fist pumping power metal like scream at the top of the hills about battle sort of song that just happens to be taking the battle straight to Vince Neil, which I can always get behind. That is awesome. And the band gets a uh, gold star from me for that alone. Oh, <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there was some there was some interesting choices there. I will say, yeah, give a shout out to the Nathan Explosion uh, 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 cameo in the vowel song, the intermission. Uh, though I do have to say that it was interesting, but I think the bit kind of lost me in the moment where he where he says where he reads million correctly. <laughs> yep. Then remembers he has to be funny and dumb. And then proceeds to read it bad. Nah, we don't do a second take. There's no second takes in heavy like, metal. M- million. No, no. That's that's the correct way to say it. I gotta be funny. Malayan. It's a, it, 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 like, it's, 
<laughs> but he says Funkin' a chili. Funkin' a chi- funkin the chili. It's, he says Funkin' the chili. It's awesome. I'm with you, Petey. I, I, okay. I, I hear what you're saying. It was, it was saying. an okay bit. It's it's a it's, bit it's a on an dumb album record. It's a it's the dumbest track on a dumb album. Yeah, but so it's still talk, like it's, all right. It's let's talk about some conclusions uh, on this uh, album. Uh, bring it back around the horn, uh, Brett. What would be your conclusion? Well, I I wholly <sighs> deep in my heart, I I I I know for a fact that we the world needs to have people lampooning hard rock and metal bands. I mean, hell, Nigel Tufnell is a is a is a a man who who wanted to rock you tonight, tonight. Um, but uh, you know, this album really uh, just made me want to listen to other bands that did it earlier and did it better. Um, I didn't find the music to be outstanding enough to overcome the juvenile and what I thought was unfunny lyrics and the singing style. I found to be about as far from what I wanted to hear. Um, there was no aha. There was no great, uh, like, w- listen to that turn of phrase that, like, makes me smile every time. Um, if you're a 13-year-old fart joke enthusiast, um, I, I, and I had to, like, suggest an album to you, I probably would find another album. Um, I'm not mad at these guys for making this album. I'm sure there are plenty of people who quite enjoy this and have fond memories of this album. I just didn't think it was that great. Um, the, uh, the, there, there are, there's some stuff going on in here. Obviously, people work hard and uh, spent time and went into a studio and made this album. And you, if you don't give a shit, you don't go through that much work. So, you know, nothing on them. This isn't for me. Yeah. Uh, Drew, what will be your conclusive thoughts on the album? Um... I want to not like it because of the squealing vocals. Um, I really do. <clears throat> but, hey, I'm the guy that brought Ninja Sex Party. Juvenile humor is sort of a thing that I enjoy. Um, so the the anonymous esophagus thing, I I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny. Um, I think anytime, again, taking a dig at Motley Crue, I'm always a fan of. Um, fuck them. Um... But, like, overall, I think this had some good stuff. Like Brett would say, on an album, he found some things that he enjoyed. There are gold in them hills for me every once in a while. Um, and it was it was very conveniently made. If I'm going to go for comedy metal, um, I'm going to go to Death Clock first, if I'm honest. But this this had some good chuckles and some good music and some solid music even when there weren't the chuckles being had, so I can I can I can hold with it, Bub. Yes. P, I, I think you have something to bring up. <laughs> I will about. I will I will say I will bring this up. You did mention Ninja Sex Party. This is mm-hmm. a, an extremely dumb infantile album that Patrick uh, brought. Uh if you remember there were a couple people that completely shit on Ninja Sex Party, including this guy. Uh, again. Again, my, my tastes are deeply fucked up. I am a music snob and an asshole, and I'm probably wrong. I'm, I'm just going to stand on my consistency. Exactly. At yeah. least you're consistent. It's, yeah, again. that's right. Hey, you know what you're going to do. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> I'm also consistent. I laughed at this record. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're consistent. I'm not saying I'm alone in my consistency. Hey, I'm just patting you're, myself Drew, on you're the consistent. Head. You're consistent. This guy's the hypocrite. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Not even disagreeing. I cannot... I cannot defend why I, I I can explain what I didn't like about Ninja Sex Party that this band does differently, but it's still it's I will grant you it's humor pretty much on the same level. Yeah, uh, I will say similar. I think to how I thought about Ninja Sex Party, I I I, I had fun. Uh, I'm I don't know if I'll ever revisit it again, but I had fun. I dug it. You know, I, I, you know, fun listening to that record and. Just having it play while, well, like, say, I played Shovel Knight again for the 15 million times. I thought you were going to say <laughs> Shuffleboard. <laughs> Shuffleboard. South florida Uh I swear, I have so many games, but I just I go back to either. I, I, would, I, would, I would still be going back to Rogue Legacy if that was working again. I don't know why it's not working for me. It's a weird thing. Uh, PD playing Shuffleboard in a Marlins hat is I, the I would most love to South see him Florida thing. A ever. Tommy Bahama shirt. Uh, 
unbuttoned down to like the me and, no no it'll be you no know, the image it'll be me and Marlon's man Mar- Marlon man <laughs> Marlon's man yeah it's him and his like bright orange jersey me and this one like us together just chomping on cigars like just that's right <laughs> you know when I come down there we'll we'll have to get some some mean bocce ball and shuffleboard on with Marlon man yeah uh we'll, we'll uh, that'd be cool to meet Marlon man he's he seems cool. <laughs> He's at the 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 point where where he went off and went after the dude who uh crashed the Fort Bragg game made him awesome in my book. The guy that crashed the Fort Bragg game because he, by paying like a, like a thousand dollars so he could catch foul balls. Well, if you want to hear more of Petey's opinions on people who hang out in the crowds of base, but you want to hear what he has to say about Getty Lee. Or about Marlon Mann, and maybe anybody else that we can't, we don't remember now, but we'll come up later. Uh, you may have a place in the future. Yes, uh, we, I get to talk about some some sports and weird stuff. My love of Battle Dome and uh, American Ninjas Gliders. Enter the Battle Dome. <laughs> yes, or yeah, and uh, WMAC yeah. Masters and things like that, uh, and novelty sports of all kind. Also, here's another one on the list: Pete, Brett Slam Ball. Uh, yeah, yes. Slam ball. Right there with Roller Jam. Slam Ball was great. Yes. Uh, so look up this cross McMahon, promotion Vince, moment brought to you by Zimmer. Vince, Vince McMahon should not have invested in the XFL. Should have made Slam Ball more of a thing. Yes, exactly. God, that would that be was, awesome. Yes. Um, but yes. Derailed. But. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, enough about, uh, pulling Johnson's. I think, uh, uh, Patrick, you have a conclusive thoughts to say. What are your conclusive thoughts on this album? Uh, if you like Death Clock, but you're also like me and really into metal and want a little more musically out of it, I I feel like Zimmer's Hole gives you that same vibe, but with really more technically sound metal music. Nothing against Brendan Small. He makes some of my favorite things. He is an adequate guitar player. He is not this good. Um... Uh, it's fun. It's stupid. It's an album. I I'm amazed. I'm still listening to this. I thought I would tire of it. Like I did a lot of the metal from this era, but I think it's so dumb that I can't help but enjoy it. It's it's in frequent rotation, and uh, they 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 keep. I guess they've played a couple of shows this year for the first time in ages, and I am holding out hope for a follow up someday. Uh, so yeah, those are uh, conclusive thoughts on the album. Uh, now we get to the main event of the evening. We get to our haiku reviews. It's our thoughts are, are summarized into poetic form. Uh, let's go with the usual initiative order. Brett, what is your haiku? They tried really hard. They're exceptionally good. But we're annoying. <laughs> uh, Drew, what is your haiku? Crazy, crazy metal made by some lads having some fun. A little less squeal, please. Mm-hmm. Would they be mad lads? Yes. <laughs> uh, no, they they would be um, they'd be strapping, yeah. strapping young lads. Uh, shamelessly stupid. Won't be most folks' cup of tea, but I can dig it. Uh, Patrick, what is your haiku? Dudes from Canada. Over the top death metal, tongue firmly in cheek. Yeah. And that uh, brings us to the end of another fantastic episode of Record Breakers. That is just your thoughts. Those are our thoughts. I don't know where sentences are coming from. Uh, those were our thoughts on, on Zimmer's Hole. That brings us kind of to a close. You can, of course, find this album on our Spotify playlist. Record Breakers is a home game uh, linked on all of our posts. Follow along, play along. Uh, next week's album might be on the Spotify playlist. We'll find out now. Uh, we'll be provided by none other than Brett. Brett, what do you got for us next week? Oh, we're gonna have a. a, a, a we're gonna eat our uh, eat our vegetables again. This time, the how do you review this kind of album? We're getting Kraftwerk's uh, "The Man Machine" from 1978. Yes. Oh fuck, that's gonna be weird. Yes. yes, it is. Get you some some hardcore hallucinogenics and uh, put on your your headphones. 
We're gonna have ourselves it's not the album some craft I think it is. I think it's it, it is the album I think it is. Uh-huh. Oh man, it's that one. It was either that or some ludicrous, and I don't know that right now is the time for a bunch of technically white people to 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 talk about the intricacies of uh, having hose in different area codes. Maybe sometime later. Yes. <laughs> but uh, for now, we're gonna go to Germany. Yes. Uh, we will uh, with Krafuk. Uh, and then is when the time we in which we dance, uh, and you will enjoy that next week. Spoiler alert: There's theremin on this album. Yes, <laughs> there's <laughs> all sorts of shit. This is this is a sproing album. This is like if you could have nothing but sproing, we're gonna have some sproing. Sproing yeah. as a genre. That's yes. right. <laughs> Post sproing. Spoiler <laughs> alert: We Proto-sproing. must all have um. It is a. All, yeah. <laughs> the A block of this record might be very short. Uh proto sproing is that's what right. you could call it. Uh but yeah, that's next week and this is this week. You can of course find us all over the internet. Patrick is at Swagger. Brett is at ABD Bibbert H I B B I two I B I B B A R D. Drew is at X Juicifer X. I'm at PD Rave. The show is four record breakers. That's the number four record breakers uh on Twitter. Uh, recordbreakerspodcast.com recordbreakerspodcast at gmail.com is the email if you want to email us with your thoughts and comments and questions and whatnot. Uh, rebelli.net for listening to the shows rebelli tv on youtube on, Twi- uh, on twitch uh, keep an eye out for that uh, we're on itunes, stitcher all over the place subscribe, like, share uh, do the things until next time hasta los huevos Go Tokyo Gas Creators. Dude. What's falling? Random things falling in the background. <laughs>